I'm not gonna lie, that is a mixed doubles class. <laughs> I thought it would. Oh yeah! Who's laughing now? I thought, I know what you lot are like. This is an official disclaimer. I am a fucking hillbilly, not a sciencer. Anything that you're about to see is mostly for entertainment purposes. Take from it what you will, but don't take my bloody word for it. Enjoy. <laughs> Welcome back to Boo Scrappy Racing. Today, you're gonna get to experience a Sunday in the life of an old car fan in the south of France. First stop of the day, Local car show. We're expecting a group of Ferraris today that are touring the south of France, so that should be worth seeing. Hop on in. This I've seen a few times. You won't remember, I don't know. We met a guy at Angoulême who had one of these. And I thought it was the same car, because it's the same bloody colour and it's the same car. But this is freaking mint. <laughs> I mean, the interior is just to die for. You can pretty much smell Bridget Bardot. Yeah, definitely. Cigars and Bridget Bardot is what I'm getting. Just beautiful. And I don't understand, no one's ever told me. I've got no idea how Pininfarin came to design a Peugeot. Feels a bit weird, I'm not gonna lie. A little bit dirty. I'm a little bit speechless. <laughs> you know when you think a car's gonna be made out of plastic? And then it turns out to be metal. Turns out to be the real deal. Holy wah, just beautiful. Look at the steering stick. Just beautiful. Oh, that's a like chop your left leg off to have a spin out in, isn't it? One of them. I mean, I don't know that they're particularly fast. It is, after all, almost a Volkswagen, but just. Oh shit, should say that quietly, shouldn't I? Yeah. Just beautiful. And then modern is as modern does. And again, it took a minute to work out why these are so expensive. But it seems in France, when you bring a car in, you have to pay all of the road tax up front. So they get charged like 30% on top of the new car price for bringing a car like that in. Hence, they're really bloody expensive. But that's a weapon, isn't it? I mean, not really my bag. What is, that's a V4? Oh, I've seen, is, I think this might be, oh, I thought that was, t mm. that's got the, that Ford V4. Again, not really my bag, Fords are, I mean, I've got a Ford, but you know what I mean, this era. I think that's like the V4 engine that's in a transit for a minute. I mean, not that this is a transit, but. What the hell's a Ford 12M? Someone's gonna tell me in the comments that I'm a complete idiot and I actually should know everything about it. I am a complete idiot, but I can't know everything about most cars. I only know about a little bit about a few cars, but I'm pretty sure that's the same. If it's a V4, that'll be the same engine, I think, that was in a Transit. <laughs> this is back to like the Mini. <laughs> Many an adventure in a 205, just saying. The less said about that, the better, mate. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> That driver's seat's seen some bloody action, mate. <laughs> She's a bit sweaty, Betty. Just a little. Oh, talking of great ideas. Talking of great ideas. 
I wonder if that actually is a... I don't know enough about the engine to know what it is, but it's an engine. Isn't it? And it's a six cylinder. And I'm guessing Berger make a V6, right? These little Alpines, genuinely the French. I clocked this the minute I came up to it. Check this out. Look in there. Tell me that's not just a beautiful little touch. What we're going to write on the hub is Alpine, because it's an Alpine. And that's just one of those little things. All French manufacturers just do those quirky little things so well. I mean, and it's a modern car, but I have to say this would be on my list. It's an absolute beauty. Absolute beauty. Just little splashes of mm, little carbon fibre, the blue stitching. Oh, hello. Check out the roof. Full carbon roof. Oh, it's just beautiful. I don't do modern cars, but that's just lush. It's just got, like I said, those little, and the French do do it so well. Little quirky, little quirky touches that are just so nice. The little centre caps on the wheels that look like centre lock wheels. Just, mm. I like that a lot. It is weird, isn't it? In a country where people, a lot of English people are telling you that the French don't like the English, but they love English cars. Always a bunch of English cars turn up at this, and we're in the middle of nowhere, a little tiny town. Always a bunch of English cars turn up, and they're always really popular. Don't see so many Daimlers, but these don't make strong money here. For a left-hand drive car, which is usually a premium for an imported car, for a left-hand drive car, they don't make strong money. £5,000? I don't know what that is in real money. Uh, probably uh, about five thousand pounds will buy you a nice one. Ten will buy you a Minter. This one, unfortunately, had an argument with a key. By the looks of it, some monsters keyed it down the side, and that's not cool. Okay, but it's definitely been driven. It's been enjoyed, isn't it? Mm. Can hopefully edit all the sniffs out. <laughs> going to be controversial. Probably going to cause some divisions in the comments. Personally, I think the Testarossa is the Emperor's new clothes. For my money, it's one of the ugliest cars Ferrari have ever made. And I do appreciate the fact that's controversial. And I think maybe. It's that Fiero-based kit car that there were so many of has kind of blighted it. But just somehow to me, it looks like a kit car. And I know, I know, don't hate me. Don't shoot the messenger. But I just, like I say, for me, probably the ugliest Ferrari that's ever been manufactured. And actually, that's a stretch. If I thought about it, I could probably come up with some uglier ones, but it's pretty bad. It's still a Ferrari, it's still cool. And this one's a, is a gated manual, so, you know. It's still a legend car, just for me. It's a no for me. I'm out. I don't know about this year, but a lot of these are really small. They're a massive car, but really small inside. Oh no, that's got room for activities. Definitely get a fat boy in there. That's nice. Oh, hello. The radio is uh, up and down. She's a very atypic radio installation. I don't know if I've ever seen a car with that specially made vertical radio. It's pretty kinky, isn't it? Auto, if ever you needed to, uh, if ever you needed to feel dangerous, this wouldn't be a bad car to go out in, would it? <laughs> just absolutely as cool as you like. And uh, just smacks sort of gangster, doesn't it? Really clean as well. Lovely looking seats. Super looking paint and just angry again, not really my bag, but I, I can't remember what this sounds like. I've seen it a few times. I bet it sounds nice. And just a hoot to drive in it, that sort of a car. An absolute bloody blast. Isn't that a beautiful little car. I love it. I love the little vents. These little vents which clearly you can't see today because it ain't hot enough, but those little vents open and it just looks... See, 
Oh, Jador, Jador. They, uh, they all open and it just looks so good. It looks so cool with those open. And I think some of the bigger ones had more of them. Another day, we'll try and find another one. So this one's got three little things, and I think the bigger Peugeots have more of those little vents. And yeah, they just look mad with them all open. You could do something really cool with one of these, couldn't you? Right on, that's enough car showing. That's enough drinking beer. Let's get ourselves home. I have just thought, you know, we've used a fair bit of petrol this weekend. We need some more petrol. This is a good opportunity to show people how we make petrol. Let's go home and make some uh, methanol, ethanol free petrol. Back to Boo Scrappy Racing, or as we should call it today, to be absolutely correct, Boo Scrappy Science. You can tell it's science, safety equipment, and a white coat. What are we doing today, I hear you ask, Matthew? Well, today what we're doing is manufacturing ethanol-free petrol. Why are we manufacturing ethanol-free petrol, I hear you ask? That's a very good question. Let me answer. Ethanol in petrol is considered wildly to be the devil's piss. It is known to corrode plastic and rubber. It is known to corrode petrol tanks by attracting water and building a layer at the bottom of the petrol tank. It is also renowned for causing divorces by making lawn mowers and strimmers, etc. difficult to start due to there being water in the carburetor because they've been left all winter long with fuel in them. We're going to solve all of these problems today by taking the ethanol out of the petrol. How are we going to do that, I hear you ask. Another very good question in some very easy stages. Stage one, we're going to need some petrol. In this instance, exactly 250 milliliters of petrol. Why do we need 250 milliliters? Well, we don't really, but I want you to be able to see how much ethanol comes out, so we need maths to work that out. 250 mil, seems like a good place to start. This is EN10, so it should be 10% ethanol. We need water. We need 25 milliliters of water. Boom. Why do we need 25 millilitres of water? We need 25 millilitres of water because that is 10% of 250 mil. That should make it nice and easy to see the ethanol come out. How are we going to see the ethanol come out? I'm going to add a little bit of colouring into my water, just a drop, and just for a second. And that way, when I pop that in the petrol, you'll see it nice and clear. Voila. Now, in order to actually make sure we get out all the methanol, in order to make sure that my teeth stay stuck firmly where they're meant to stay and my tongue works in conjunction with my lips, I'm going to need a drill with a specially manufactured ethanol whisk upon it. If you want to see this go horribly wrong, wait to the end of the video, that'll be a giggle. So, carefully mixing the water. Oh! and the petrol, and the ethanol, and the dye all together. Now all we need to do is wait. <gasps> Sometime later, welcome back. I'm hoping you can see we've now gone from 25 millilitres of pink fluid to 45. That means that we've taken 25 millilitres of ethanol out of this petrol, and that is winning. Next. Now in our small demonstration, we've got to get the water out. I'm going to use this, uh, this syringe because it's what I got. And if we take that pink out of the bottom of that, what we're left with, lady and gentlemen, is approximately 175 milliliters of ethanol-free petrol that will save your marriage. 
I mean, that may be a slight exaggeration, but it might stop your petrol tank from rusting. Obviously, this isn't really enough petrol to do anything good, so we need to produce this on bulk. Exactly the same procedure, but you're going to need a slightly bigger container. This has been Boo Scrappy Science Edition. Oh, no, I fucked that up completely. I never said I was good at this video, Malarkey. Right, now, I forgot a stage. Inside petrol, octane. Bit of a petrol head, that's all important. You have to remember, some of that octane is dissolved in the ethanol that you've just removed, so you've lowered the octane. So you need to get yourself a bottle of octane booster, a little bit of Googling to work out how much to add, depends on how much you made, but you give her a little drop of the magic sauce, hoopla, you're back in business. That's it, that's it all done now. Remember, be kind, keep making cool shit out of old shit. See ya. Ha, ha, ha.